there a way out? Can I change my brain? Am I just a victim to who I am? I'm your host, Steve Sisler. Stay tuned for another episode of Behavioral Insights. Welcome to the Behavioral Insights Podcast. This is episode 31, and we're going to be talking about measuring down. Stay tuned. folks. Oh, it's good to have you with me. I was getting lonely. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about measuring down today. Now, most people, you, you, you would think, you would think that most people are always trying to measure up. Um, but that's not really true. Uh, most people are measuring down. Um, and we're going to talk about what that actually looks like and what the behavioral and emotional orientations are around such thinking. Um, so let's talk about self-image again. Uh, and I keep on, I'm keeping, how can I word that? <laughs> I keep talking about this. And the reason why I keep talking about it is because it's so prevalent in our uh, society today. Um, so uh, when your self-image suffers a wounding, let's say, we'll call it a wounding, maybe through social disturbances um, or by some other means more or less challenging within your social sphere, uh, what people do is they bend reality in order to make that wounding more palatable because the human brain is a surviving brain. Human beings uh, are survivors by nature. Um, and that's why uh, the oldest part of your brain is limbic. Um, and that is the automatic center. It's why your stomach uh, does a little flip when you get too close to in the edge on a high building. It's why you feel like you've lost your breath when you think you see a snake in the grass when it's really just the garden hose. It's that part of your brain that is really there to protect you. And then through hundreds and thousands of years of, of, of experiencing, um, you know, a negative stimuli and dangerous stimuli, uh, our brains have learned to detect it. Um, and so when we start feeling bad about ourselves, when we... Uh, uh, have feelings of inferiority or low self-imaging, then our brains will unconsciously bend reality in an effort to make it more palatable. Um, think of it like favoring your ankle uh, if you've sprained it or any other part of your body that was hurt through some injurious event. Um, we find a way to make it through without it uh, handicapping us if we can. This is why we put our legs in casts. This is why we have crutches, uh, slings, neck braces. Um, we do this with our body, but our minds do it with our hearts, if we could call it that, your soul. Um, and I'm not suggesting the soul is separate from your mind I'm at all. Your soul is your mind. Um, so this can involve many kinds of emotional placebos. Um, and these placebos are going to act as basically a salve to our wounded image of self. So I certainly don't want to disparage these keen and cunning tools that we tend to use in order to get ourselves through the world. But I do want to clearly define them for you and then uh, uh, help you to learn how to overcome some of these things. Um, 
So uh, human beings favor poor circumstances in a sense. Uh, we, we favor these circumstances, and this is driven by our emotions, uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and we invent alternative worldviews, new universes to live in that are better than the real one. Um, and why do we do this? It's because it's a coping mechanism. We cope with the realities that work against our potential worthiness uh, within the social spectrum. We all do this in one form or another. And this is what I call measuring down. And so part of the way we will cope is to measure down. So measuring down is when we look for other people around us that are really worse off than we are. And then we use them as the standard rule of measurement. Um, so rather than measuring up, we tend to measure down. So this type of ruler keeps us in good standing with our distorted view of ourselves. But what it fails to do is provide any ambition to change our image of self or to overcome our circumstances that could be working against us. And part of the reason why so many of us do this is because most people are passive. Um, now, I do not for one minute want you to think being passive is a bad thing. It's actually moot. Um, whether you're dominant, passive, passive-aggressive, uh, aggressive, or assertive, um, it, it doesn't really matter. So uh, you need to keep that in mind as we go, as we go through this um, talk today. Um, so uh, this is a, a unconscious behavioral repositioning that we do when this happens, and it allows for a distorted sense of being without challenging ourselves or identifying with whatever the weak link is that's responsible uh, for these perceived flaws within our emotional framework. So this is the best way that we cope with our mistaken beliefs about ourselves. So downward positioning, whether associated with personal relationships, workplace relationships, religious relationships, political affiliations, <laughs> uh, that's an important one today, or any other type of personal connection, uh, these things lead not only to performance-based living, as we've been talking about, thinking about the Velveteen Rabbit again, uh, but may also cause us to quit striving or to give up in areas where we would normally keep trying or try harder. Some of us won't make an effort to take calculated risks or to explore new options when faced with difficulties because we lower our expectations of ourselves. Again, this is a form of measuring down. Uh, this is a process of positioning ourselves lower within the greater social spectrum. And it can develop into a chronic lifestyle of measuring down. Uh, so when this happens, we live down to mediocrity or we live down to the status quo rather than living up to a more exceptional ideal uh, worth taking risks for. We lessen our chances of reaching our full potential when we don't measure up, okay? Measuring down uh, creates negative results. Measuring up can create positive results. So downgrading our self-image can become a bottomless pit of performance that plays out in the world. There are no winners in this position, only losers. And those too weak to escape the shame and torment that this kind of a lifestyle can create. Familiarity with these type behaviors, fueled by negative emotions, no longer unwittingly offer opportunities for personal contempt. I'm going to tell you that it demands it. Um, and so that's the problem here. So when we engage in these lower mindsets, uh, we may quit going to school. We may believe we're not worthy of a raise. Or uh, we may believe there's no other form of employment that I could do because I don't have a degree. 
um, or uh, you may not believe in yourself. And so you just don't believe that uh, you're going to be good at anything else other than what you're doing. Um, this is just a terrible way to live. Um, we may end up, you know, uh, ending a long-term relationship or quitting uh, the pursuit of a meaningful relationship. How many people, you know, settle for what they can get instead of fighting for what they want when it comes to dating people? Um, I'm not willing to wait for what I want, so I just go to the bars and I just hunt up somebody who will give me uh, uh, the time of day. Um, this is all measuring down. It's lowering our expectations uh, with this belief that we just aren't worthy enough uh, to have our dreams and our goals uh, met. Um, so uh, 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 we may live a life where we just exaggerate our outcomes for better effect when we're talking to other people or to solicit a positive reaction. Um, from the people that we're with. We might say, oh, you know, the room was full, but we're leaving out the fact that, that there were only 19 people there. Um, and it's because we're afraid. We're, we're living by comparison. We see on Facebook that somebody else was doing something and there was 500 people there. And so we think we're not good because there was only 19 people where we were. Um, uh, I've spoken to one person before, um, just so you know. I've spoken to uh, 13 people, 14 people, uh, and gave it all I've got. Um, and so uh, uh, I never let that stop me from delivering the message or doing what I thought needed to be done in an effort to help the people. Um, now, that doesn't mean I've always had the greatest of self-esteem. I hadn't, um, but um, uh, uh, I didn't have it in that area. Um, so I had it in other areas where it was affecting me, but since those days I've, I fixed it. Um, so this process of giving up <clears throat> is really birthed through, uh, this wounded self image in a lot of us, um, expecting these, uh, overextended potentials from ourselves. They really stem from favoring our poor self image, coddling it much like, you know, taking care of that sprained ankle. Um, we quietly caress our feelings of inferiority and we, we nurture um, that sense of uh, victimhood that we live in. Uh, our poor self-image starts to create a preemptive need to strike ourselves before somebody else does. It's, this is called kill or be killed. Um, oftentimes, we pull ourselves out of the running for fear of being uh, told that, you know, we're not going to make it. Um, uh, you know, whatever the case may be, I could come up with any kind of a story here or any kind of an illustration, but I think I'm making the point. Um, it's a knee-jerk self It's a knee-jerk, you know, reaction to low self-worth, and it can be brought on by believing the lie that we create in our own self-esteem laboratory. We all have one. Um, we uh, conjure up potions, emotional potions, and we drink it. Um, and it's like uh, drinking alcohol because the pressure is on. Um, and we numb ourselves to reality uh, in, in, or, in order to, to get through. Um, uh, when we don't measure up to the, these, these overextended images that we create for ourselves, um, such as how good we are at accomplishing a particular task or uh, whatever the case may be, we end up projecting wrong assumptions, not only about ourselves, but um, about others. And it's born out of this distorted view. I mean, you might say something like, oh, he's only doing that to make me look bad. When reality, a person might be doing something and they're not even really thinking about you. What you're doing is, is you're feeling bad and you look at other people as the cause of your feeling bad. But in reality, you are feeling bad. Uh, and the only person who can fix that is you. Um, 
Uh, so this takes us back to being inner directed versus outer directed. And if you're you're outer directed, um, then what happens is everything becomes the fault of something or somebody else. And uh, your decisions are always your fault, um, uh, especially if you're an adult. Um, uh, so this idea of he or she's only doing that to make me look bad uh, uh, is a reflection that mirrors your low expectation of yourself, brought on by your poor self-image, driven by your comparison making and projecting it on somebody else. Uh, so, you know, my encouragement to you is to think about yourself and what you're doing. Is this something you're doing? Um, this false uh, but common cure for this conundrum seems to be the same for everybody experiencing it. In other words, pe- we're all doing the same thing when we do this. We unfortunately believe that lowering the bar in relationship to our personal aptitude is the answer. Uh, how do we do this? Well, we look for people that are worse off than we are and measure ourselves by their even lower standard rather than seeking someone more successful and trying to live up to their level. We'll say things like, at least I'm not like so-and-so, or you should see the way my father acts. I'm not nearly as bad as he is. This deceitful rationalization is going to rob you of the courage to live up to a better ideal by giving you, basically, a free ticket to fail. If we desire, we could work towards something far more productive. But many of us don't because we're afraid of failing. We're afraid of succeeding. Why are people afraid to succeed? Because there's a lot of people that believe if they gain it, they won't be able to keep it. And so rather than losing it, they don't attempt to gain anything at all. This is a form of measuring down instead of measuring up. Instead of trying to live up to a better superlative, we think about how we're not nearly as bad as other people we know. We believe a worse situation makes our situation look much better, so we remove the desire to change, and that's what we're actually doing. And we're using the, mo- the wrong measuring rod in an attempt to make it happen. Um, we, we remain stagnant in the light of scenarios worse than our own. Um, uh, we believe, uh, we feel pretty good about ourselves in light of someone who has no capacity for growth. We surrender to mediocrity as if it's the brightest idea we've had all year. Unfortunately, this ensures little to no productivity and it plays into the vicious cycle that we've created with our poor self-worth scenarios. Um, you gotta, if you're doing this, you have to stop it. You have to stop measuring yourself using the ruler of differing levels of failure instead of a ruler that reflects any sort of success. Um, and so, so what do we do? Like, how do we get out of this uh, process that uh, we've created for ourselves if you're one of those people that's doing this? One of the things you need to do is check your friends list. What kind of people are you hanging around? Oftentimes, people will pal with the people that make them feel best about who they are. And if you don't think you're that great, you will tend to position yourself around people of less caliber than yourself in an effort to feel good about who you are in the world. This is something that happens a lot with people. So what I would suggest is to find out who are you spending the majority of your time with. Is it somebody you would want to live up to or is it somebody you are living down to? What you want to do is position yourself around enough people that have qualities that are better than your qualities, that might be even smarter than you are, uh, that might have a better job than you have, um, and that might um, uh, see themselves clearer in the world than you can see yourself. You have to have a few friends like this. I'm not saying all your friends have to be this way, but the people you spend the majority of your time with should be people that have uh, qualities about themselves 
that you desire that are better than qualities you may yourself possess. That's the first step in changing uh, the way you view yourself in the world and whether or whether or not you're going to measure up or going or you're going to measure down. Number two, ask yourself this question. Am I teachable? How do you take correction? Let's take some advice from the ancient King Solomon. Uh, Here's some of the things he says. My child, pay attention and listen to my wisdom and insight. Then you will know how to behave properly and your words will show that you have knowledge. That's Proverbs chapter 5 verse 1. Um, A wise man when rebuked will love you all the more. That's Proverbs chapter 9 verse 8. People that have wisdom enjoy finding out when they're wrong. And if you don't enjoy finding out when you're wrong, uh, you'll never grow because you're measuring down, not measuring up. Here's another one. People who listen when they are corrected will live, but those who will not admit that they are wrong are in danger. That's Proverbs 10, 17. Here's another great one. Um, Where there is no counsel, the people fall, but in a multitude of counselors, there is safety. That's one I use a lot. That's Proverbs eleven fourteen. 14. Um, someone who will not learn will be poor and disgraced. Um, that's Proverbs 13, 18. That's another great one. Uh, Here's another awesome one. Uh, Conceited people do not like to be corrected. They never ask for advice from those who are wiser. Okay, that's Proverbs 15, 12. So um, uh, you have to listen to these things I'm saying and take them seriously. Um, Oftentimes when somebody points out something that we're doing or something we're not doing, so whether it's commission or mission, uh, let me say that slower, commission or omission uh, in our lives, um, we listen and we make the change. Uh, here's a few more. Uh, the ear that hears the rebukes of life will abide among the wise. That's Proverbs 15.31. Rebuke is more effective for a wise man than a hundred blows on a fool. Proverbs 17.10. So uh, these are really good uh, suggestions here. Uh, These are not commands. Uh, These are suggestions. Um, And so people who take advice, people who understand who they are, and they understand who they are not, and they are agreeable with both answers, tend to be more successful than people that get uh, easily offended um, and easily get hurt when someone who cares about you is pointing things out in your life that they believe uh, could be of help to you if you would change some things. Um, so if, 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 if you don't appreciate those types of things because you get offended easy, uh, you need to change that today. Um, because, uh, when you are around people that care about you, uh, typically they're looking out for you. And if you don't let people look out for you and you avoid people that, uh, you feel inferior around, uh, then you're going to have problems and they're going to persist. So uh, being teachable is a very important step in learning how to measure up in the world. All right, what's the third thing that you can do? A third thing you can do is ask for help when you need it. Um, I know so many people that are in some sort of situation and then the situation gets worse because they don't want to ask for help. And the reason why they don't want to ask for help is because they are ashamed. 
Shame is terrible. Uh, it's not a friend. It's an enemy. Um, you don't want to live in shame and you do not want to live in guilt. And you do not want those two things to keep you from asking for help when you need it. Um, and so uh, the third thing you can do is ask for help when you need it. And I don't care if it's help putting together a resume. I don't care if it's help um, uh, needing some ideas. I don't, I, uh, I don't care if it's uh, what kind of help it is. Um, if you isolate yourself from others and refuse to ask for help when you need it, um, you're positioning yourself to live a life of measuring down, not measuring up. Um, the only way up, folks, is up. Uh, now, uh, that's more profound than you think it is. Let me say it again. The only way up is up. Um, and if you're constantly thinking down about yourself, you're constantly hanging around people that are lower in, a, in their stage of life than you are. If you're constantly hanging around people that are uh, younger uh, than you are, if you're constantly measuring yourself against people that are worse off than you are, all these types of uh, thinking and acting is going to do you no good at all. None. What's a fourth thing that you can do to help you in this area of measuring down and help you begin to measure up? I would suggest you find some friends that are a lot older than you are. Um, when I was dating my wife, I was 20 years old, and we used to double date with a couple uh, that were at that point, they were in their late 40s or early 50s. Um, and so uh, we hung out with these people. We would go to their home. Um, we hung around people that were married with children. And we hung around people we admired that were married with children. And the reason why we did this is because we wanted to see um, what the best way was for raising kids, disciplining kids, and things like this. Because we knew that we didn't know um, uh, we didn't know how to parent. We didn't know how to be married. We didn't know how to quarrel. Um, we're 20. You don't know these things. Um, and so what we did was rather than, uh, spending time around people that are our age or younger than us that didn't have life experience, we chose to hang around people that did, um, and uh, does that make us perfect as parents? Did that make, did, does that mean we did everything right? No, it means we didn't do anything as, wor as bad as we would have done it if we didn't do this. That's all it means. Um, so uh, you have to find time and find places in your life to where you are looking up, you are reaching up, you are reaching out. So up, out, these types of words, these types of scenarios are the scenarios you're going to want to better position yourself in the world for success. Uh, so uh, that's all I'm going to talk about in this particular one. Um, I've got a lot I have to do today and we're actually getting ready for a trip to Universal Studios. Um, and so uh, we're leaving tomorrow uh, for that and um, down to sunny Florida uh, for a few days. Uh, to just take in some sunshine and have some fun and some rest and relaxation together. Um, so uh, I hope you listen to this again and not just once if this speaks to you. Um, I, I think it would be good for you to take everything into consideration and share it with people that you might think uh, could be helped by this. That's really the goal. This isn't the Steve Sisler Show. This really is my attempt to help you, the listener, um, have the, the life you want and help those that you know that could use some cheering up or some good information uh, as they uh, work their way through the world. Um, all right. You've been listening to yours truly. And this has been Behavioral Insights. Behavioral Insights.